Good afternoon, uh, people of Longmont. My name is Lupita Ramirez, and I'm so um, honored to be here with you today to give you some ideas, tips, and uh, history on the tradition of the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. And uh, I'm a native of Oaxaca, Mexico, and in my hometown is a big deal, uh, the celebration of the Day of the Dead. Not so much as in the north of Mexico, where people do not celebrate as much as we do. They only visit the, um, the graveyards on November 2nd. In Oaxaca, in the contrary, we celebrate for over a week, where you can really actually see the transformation of the whole city from just being plain and beautiful to very colorful and beautiful, uh, with representations of sugar skulls, skeletons, and a lot of sempual suchil, which is this flower, the flower of the Day of the Dead, uh, known as marigolds uh, by you. And the whole town is just uh, an, a spectacular scene. You can also smell a lot of different things, mainly the sempual suchil. Uh, they grow wild everywhere in some of the states of Mexico. So that gives it a very special uh, atmosphere to the whole city and town of Oaxaca. Also, Guerrero is a, is a town where they celebrate in a big way this tradition. The, in el Lago de Chapala, también es celebrado, Lago de Pátzcuaro, I'm sorry, Lago de Pátzcuaro, in the Lake of Pátzcuaro in Michoacán, is also a huge celebration in the Yucatan Peninsula, and as I said before, not so much in the north of Mexico. The Day of the Dead is the fusion of two uh, big times in history of Mexico which is the pre-Hispanic um, civilizations of the Aztecs and Zapotecs. And then with the coming of the conquistadors from Spain, they brought their beliefs in, and uh, brought the Catholicism with them. And the fusion of those two beliefs became what is now, and how is now celebrated the Day of the Dead. Uh, as I said before, it's celebrated on the November 2nd, because November 1st is El Día de los Angelitos, the Day of Little Angels, which is the celebration of the souls of the kids who died at the, or the kids, people who died at young age. Uh, the Aztecs celebrated this uh, around this time of the year, not necessarily in November, but when, with the migration of the monarch butterflies. Um, you will see sometimes in the altars, this is a representation of an altar of one level, it actually should have seven levels, but uh, you, you will see there or in some stores now that is more commercialized, uh, the monarch butterflies, and that's because it's when the, the, um, they migrated from Canada or Northern America to Mexico to be exact to a forest that is in Mexico City. Um, and for the Aztecs, what it represented was the coming of the souls who were already in the other world and is how the, the souls came to visit their loved ones back during that time of the year. To help the souls come back, we had uh, different traditions that go along with the uh, altar or ofrenda for the Day of the Dead. One of is uh, to use the petals of the marigolds and put them outside, or in, outside of your house or in front of the altar because of the smell, they will guide the souls to come back. When the souls are back visiting you, which is something that we see as a sign of love, is not nothing spooky or gory. Uh, it is not Halloween, not at all. Uh, so it's something that we embrace with a lot of love and that we prepare for for a long time. So the, the way to guide the souls back to your house will be the petals of the Sempual Suchil. Um, in front of the altar or outside of the house. In the altar, you have to have certain things. But the first thing that I want to, to say is the altar could have different levels, as many as seven levels, which is the different steps that the Aztecs thought the soul would take in order to get to heaven. And uh, for the Aztecs, what was important was how you died, not how you lived in order to know where you would go uh, in the other world. So if you were a, war a warrior, I cannot say the other word, warrior, <laughs> uh, then you will probably be in the first level or you will uh, reach one of the highest levels in the afterworld. If your death was uh, from a sickness, from an illness, 
you probably will be in the lower levels, which kind of is not very good, but it's how they believed it. Uh, so the things that you can have in the altar, your altar can be one level. Uh, I always like to do three because that's another meaning that the altar has, which is heaven, earth, and the infra world. So um, in the top level, because of the Catholicism in Mexico, we would use an image of a saint many times the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is uh, our Virgin Queen from Catholics, which is Virgin Mary. So, but you can have another saint. Some people do the, the photograph of their loved one that the altar is offered to. You can have many pictures uh, of all the people that you love and has passed. So the photograph will be important. And it could be in the second level or in the first level of the altar. Uh, the souls will be thirsty when they come back. So that's why you want a clear cup of water so that they can um, drink water and be fresh again. You want the salt because they have lost the sense of taste. So they are going to use it to make their food yummy again. Uh, we don't have any food on this altar, but usually you put the, the food that your uh, loved one loved to eat. So for my father, I always put a Coca-Cola. And uh, for my grandma, I always put mole and rice. And you, we do the actual food on the altar. Uh, we tell the kids to not eat it because otherwise the, the, uh, the dead people will come and pull their feet, which is just a joke. But uh, we play with that. We play with the idea of death. Um, but you leave the, the food for as long as a week and uh, it kind of shrinks obviously because of the dehydration that it happens, but the Aztecs believe it's because they, the uh, souls actually took the scent and the, um, um, the inner part of, of those foods that were offered to them in the altar. So you want your saint or a photograph, more photographs, water and salt, um, you can have as many candles as you, as you want, but the tradition is to have a purple uh, candle because it represents the, the grief. A red candle that represents the passion of the blood or the blood of Christ, which again, uh, the Aztec tradition was taken and kind of tweaked by the conquistadors. So they all the time um, braid together. Sorry for not using proper... <laughs> words here. Um, so the four candles uh, should be white because are the four cardinal points that were important for the Aztecs, which the conquistadors took. And now you can see that the four candles in the shape of a cross. So when you position them, it will be two here and two there to uh, represent the, cro the cross. Um, the sugar skulls, they are uh, just a sweet way to decorate our altars. And uh, they come in all sizes. You can find them huge, you can find them little, you can find them tiny. And in Oaxaca, where I'm from, in Mexico City probably, they put a little uh, sign with the name of the person. And it doesn't have to be necessarily the person who died. It can just be our, our friends, our family, just because, again, we play with this idea of death. Um, the simple suchil will be important or any flower that looks like it. I know that sometimes it's hard to find uh, marigolds at certain times of the year, but the, the marigolds are the flower that we use. And um, another thing that I want to talk about is the, the doggy. If you have seen maybe Coco, the movie, you have seen uh, Dante is the name that they give him, but uh, the real name, and it's a Nahuatl name, is not Spanish. It is a solinquistle, solinquiltle. I cannot say it because it's not Spanish, it's Nahuatl, which is the, the language of the Aztecs, because they believe this dog, this particular dog, which was in fact buried with the person who, who passed, will guide the soul uh, from earth to the new, the new place, heaven in this case, or the place where they rested. So, um, I was telling a friend that we usually don't put cats, although you are gonna find in the uh, stores here, cats and dogs and who knows which other animals, but the animal that is the traditional animal put in the altar or related to the tradition of the Day of the Dead is this doggy. 
um, which I'm gonna show you a picture later. La Catrina, this is where everybody probably knows. And La Catrina is an skeleton dressed pretty fancy, usually with a huge hat and flowers. And La Catrina has its origins um, in uh, with the person who created this character, his name was uh, Posadas. And Posadas was a cartoonist that uh, mainly uh, worked for, a, for newspapers uh, representing jokes that made um, fun of the, of the political situation in Mexico back in the day. And he made this character representing Mexicans who wanted to look fancy like the Europeans that came and uh, lived in our country, mainly from France during uh, that time, uh, El Virreinato Frances in Mexico. So Posadas created this character and is in a lot of his cartoons or was in a lot of his cartoons back in the day. And then Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo's husband, uh, took that image when he was also getting very political in all his uh, paintings. You may be familiar with those. And there is a, spe a specific picture of uh, Diego Rivera holding the arm of La Catrina and holding the arm of a politician that back in the day they were, you know, was a big false about it. And this is where La Catrina becomes pretty uh, famous. And then at some point it just migrates, and uh, I don't know how, to <laughs> the Day of the Dead, which has, has become a great symbol of the Day of the Dead, uh, not only in our country, Mexico, but in other countries like the United States. Now you see it everywhere. Uh, and it's the, the origin of La Catrina, which means a Mexican person dressed in a fancy way. Catrina means to be fancy or Fufu. Uh, I guess I have one more thing, which will be the papel picado. The papel picado uh, is a beautiful Mexican craft art. Um, it's made by hand. Now you can find it through Amazon. Um, sometimes uh, they will sell the plastic, but the original is made out of tissue paper. And it's super delicate because it symbolizes the, fra the fra fragility, how fragile life is and how beautiful it is. It also represents the wind that the, the, um, when the souls are traveling, coming back or leaving after November 2nd. And with the wind, uh, they, it moves, sometimes breaks, and that has that meaning of how fragile and beautiful life is. Um, I hope that if you need more help, you look for me. I'm Lupita, and thank you so much for today. Gracias.